Dear colleagues, we want to tell you what is the purpose of a steam accumulator, when to use it and how to size it. The benefit of such an equipment is to reduce the load of a boiler or its size, make it working more constantly and increasing its efficiency. We won't step here into many details about installation arrangement and controls. This presentation wants to tell you the basics of such an application and I hope you will enjoy. The problem is if the process requires more steam than the boiler capacity. The boiler is sized for an average demand, but nevertheless there are peaks even for a short time and the peaks exceed the boiler capacity. And typically it happens when we have batch processes like autoclaves, cleaning or washing machines and start of presses. There are two solutions, either we change the boiler or we install a steam accumulator. The solution number A has following disadvantages. High investment, low efficiency because the boiler works far from the nominal load and also risk of breakdown because of continuous start and stop of the burner. And also we get wet steam for frequent charge and discharge cycles and because also for drop in the pressure. On the right side we have a record of the steam demand versus time. The boiler capacity is only 4000 kg per hour while the process has positive and negative peaks. The positive ones cannot be supplied by the boiler or if they do, the pressure drops significantly. How to overcome the problem? The solution is to use a steam accumulator. How a steam accumulator works? It is a pressurized horizontal tank which receives steam from the boiler at high pressure and releases steam to the user at lower pressure and it contains both steam and water. Why not only steam? because the steam has very low density and so it would be needed an extremely high volume. Let's make an example. The boiler supply pressure is 20 bar gauge and the user requires 12 bar. If the peak is 200 kg of steam above boiler capacity, we need to consider the difference in density between the two pressures, that is 3.92 kg per cubic meter. And therefore, if we have an excess of 200 kg, the required volume is 200 divided this difference in density. They are 51 cubic meter. The accumulator size is really giant. That is the reason why a steam accumulator doesn't work as an air buffer. The steam delivered by the boiler is heating the water in the tank and the water flashes into steam since of delta P between boiler and process. Important that loading and unloading must happen in different times. Let's see now which size is needed with that different uh, construction. The flash steam rate, Q, is the ratio between the mass of the steam and the mass of the water and is the difference of the enthalpy of the water at pressure 1 minus pressure 2 and the difference between the enthalpy of the steam and the enthalpy of the water at lower pressure, the evaporation enthalpy. If we replace the corresponding values, we get for Q a value of 0.053 kg of steam per kg of water. And since 200 kg of steam are needed, then the corresponding mass of water is 200 divided this ratio, 3773 kg of water. And uh, while the accumulator is about 90% full of water and the density of water at 20 bar is 846 kg per cubic meter, then the volume of the tank is the value we calculated before divided 90% and divided the density, 5 cubic meter, that is 10 times less. Now we see how to size a steam accumulator. The input data are peak demand of steam in kilogram, delivery time in seconds, the delivery pressure, supply pressure and the accumulator diameter. The output is 
the accumulator volume in cubic meter and its length in meters. How to calculate the peak demand? We need to record the steam consumption, mass flow function of time, and then we calculate numerically the steam excess being the integral of the difference between the steam consumption and the capacity of the boiler. And finally, we look for the maximum of that function. And the delta time, when the steam excess must be released, is the difference between the time when the function has a maximum and the previous zero value of the same function closer to the maximum. Let's see an example now. The orange chart is the record of the steam consumption in kilogram per hour. The red line is the boiler capacity, also 2500 kilogram per hour. The green chart is the integral versus time of the orange minus the red, and its units is kilogram. We can read on the right axis. This curve represents the excess demand, the demand that cannot be supplied by the boiler, and the steam accumulator has to be sized considering its peak and the delta time from the peak and the closer zero value backwards. From the chart we get the steam peak 216 kg and the peak time 380 seconds. Moreover, from the process we know the boiler pressure 18 bar gauge and the process pressure 10 bar gauge. From the available space we say accumulator diameter must be 2 meters. From the steam tab we get the value of H1 and Rho1, the enthalpy and the density of the liquid at high pressure respectively, and also capital H2 and lower H2, the enthalpy of the steam and the liquid at a lower pressure. And then we can calculate the flash steam rate corresponding to 1 kg of water, Q, that is 0.058 kg of steam per kg of water. And therefore the amount of water is the peak steam divided by Q, 3722 kg. The water volume is the mass of the water already calculated divided its density at high pressure, that is 4.363 cubic meter. And the tank volume, considering a maximum filling up to 90%, is that volume divided 90%, that we can approximate at 5 cubic meters. The length of the tank is its volume divided across area. And since we know the diameter, we know also that area. The length is therefore 1.60 meters. We are still not done because we need to check the evaporation surface SW. First, we need to calculate the cross area of the water AW, that is the volume of the water divided the length of the tank, 2.727 square meters that we can express by means of this formula where beta is this uh, angle and we get beta 1.80 radians. B, the width of the evaporation area, can be expressed as a function of H, the high of the water level and the angle beta already calculated. And for B, we find 1.57 meters, and therefore the evaporation area, that is B times L, 2.51 square meters. We need to check now if the evaporation surface is enough. And we use an empiric formula, saying that R, being the product of an empiric factor 220 times the absolute pressure in bar is 2420 kg per square meter and per hour. And our peak demand is 216 kg divided 380 seconds times 3600, the conversion factor, that is 2046 kg per hour. The maximum evaporation rate for the given surface is R 
times the evaporation surface calculated in the previous slide, 2420 times 2.51, 6074 kg per hour, that is bigger than what is required by our process. Therefore, the check is passed. To conclude our presentation, let's see here some examples how to connect a steam accumulator to the network. The first is a classical way. The steam accumulator stays in, in the boiler room and close by. In this configuration, there is only one steam pressure for the process and the boiler runs at a higher pressure. We need to place here three control valves, one along the main header, independent from the accumulator. This makes a sort of bypass. And the second one is after the accumulator, being its set point something lower than the first one. The third control valve needs to keep a minimum pressure upstream for leaving the boiler under design operating condition, preventing from lowering its pressure and then producing wet steam. This is the case when the process requires two delivery pressures, one high and one low. The high pressure is supplied directly by the boiler and the low pressure by means of the steam accumulator. And here is also recommended a bypass in between, even though it is not displayed. They are two control valves, one downstream the steam accumulator, that is the valve which controls the pressure to the process, and one upstream that controls the pressure delivered by the boiler, as displayed in the previous slide. The last configuration needs being used when the accumulator stays far from the boiler. That is the case when the users affected by the high peaks are few and at a remote location. The accumulator has two inlets, one for charging and one for discharging, but both are connected to the same header. In order to prevent the backflow, we need to provide two check valves at each inlet. The pressure reducing valve is managing the delivery condition to the process. The system works, important to remember, only if the loading and unloading of the steam accumulator are happening at different times. And here is also the bypass incorporated. In this lecture, we have learned how a steam accumulator works and criteria to size it. Important that we need to get the proper data first from the process and also from the boiler. And the less is the steam pressure required by the process, the smaller will be the size of the accumulator. I hope you have learned something new and see you again.